Welcome to this Greg's Bass Shed lesson. This is one of my shorter bass concept videos. In one of my previous YouTube videos, number 115, I showed you two positions in which to play the seventh arpeggio in. And so now I'm gonna show you five positions so you can really get around the whole of the fretboard. For the purpose of this lesson, I'm gonna use D major seven arpeggio. So for that, if you can start with your second finger on D on the fifth fret of the A string, so you've got root, third, so that's the major third, fifth, seventh, that's the major seventh, and the octave, okay, so it's this shape. Okay, in my last video I used D7, which is the same, but you've got a flattened seventh, okay? Now you can also use the five positions that I'm gonna show you for the D7 arpeggio and the D minor seven arpeggio. So I'm gonna play you those three arpeggios now on D, just so you know what they are. But I've written these all on the PDF along with these five positions. You can get that by clicking the link below this video in the description. And remember also to subscribe to my channel, Greg Space Shed, by clicking the red subscribe button and click the notification bell. So the three different types of seventh arpeggios, we've got first of all, D7, so this is sometimes called D dominant seven. So, and then we've got D major seven. And then we've got D minor seven. So we start with our first finger for that. So it's a really good idea to get to know those three shapes. They come up all the time. And obviously once you can play them on D, then just try them on any note. You could try them on G. So that's G7, G major seven, and G minor seven. So there are three shapes. But as I said, in this video, I'm gonna show you the five positions on D major seven. So the standard way to play this arpeggio is the way I showed you, starting with your second finger on the fifth fret of the A string on D there. Now you can play it in what I call the backwards position. So you start with your little finger on D and you're going. So these are exactly the same notes as the first position. Okay, just doing a lot more jumping. So that's position two. Now for the third and fourth position, we can kind of play those shapes starting on the D on the 10th fret of the E string. Okay, but I'm gonna change one of the positions slightly. So this is position three. So you're playing the same one that you played on the fifth fret. Start with your second finger on the 10th fret of the E string. Okay, so that's position three. In position four, we're gonna do the backwards position, but we're gonna play it slightly different for the top two notes. Okay, so it, position two, starting on here, was like this. But we've got that extra string there, so we can use this pattern. So that's position four. Now position five is a more of a linear position because you're traveling along the bass just using two strings. Start with your first finger on D on the fifth fret of the A string and, it, and it's like this. So we're just traveling along the D, the sorry, the A and the D string. Slowly, and you've got a big jump here for the for the third, okay, that's five frets. And then, so one, four, these are finger numbers. One, four, one, three, four, and you end on the D, which is the 12th fret. And that's position five. So I'll just quickly run through all the five positions. So one, two, Three, four, five. 
okay so that's five positions there now what I'm going to do in my next video lessons I'm going to talk about how we can apply these different shapes to baselines but really the idea behind kind of learning these positions is to learn where the notes are on different areas of the fretboard now you could take it even further you could start on you could do your standard shape so position one right up here on the 17th fret and you could do the backwards position Okay, so see how many other positions you can find just playing the same notes of the major seven arpeggio. Also remember to apply these five positions to the minor seven arpeggio and the seventh arpeggio or the dominant seventh arpeggio as it's sometimes called. Okay, so you can try those with the other types of arpeggios. Now this is really gonna give you confidence around the fretboard and just increase your knowledge of the whole fretboard. And as bass players, the notes that we get from the arpeggios, they're called chord tones, are really important. They're the most important building blocks for bass lines. So many bass lines are made up using the arpeggios. They're more important for bass lines than modes. So if you're gonna learn one thing, then learn the arpeggios, which obviously come from the major scale. So you learn the major scale and then the arpeggios first. If you want to learn more about music theory and arpeggios and scales and how to read them, um, then look at my book, Reading Music for Bass Players. That's got lots of information there about scales and arpeggios. It teaches you how to read right from the beginning and you'll look at lots of music theory as well as you learn to read. And also, if you want to get these shapes under your fingers, then look at my book, Warm Up Exercises for Bass Players. There's lots of arpeggios and scale patterns in there. Details of these books and my video courses are on my website gbshed.com so just head over to there and click one of the, um, the book menu or the video course menu. So remember to get the PDF, I've put all these shapes on the PDF, you can download that below for free by clicking the link in the description. Remember also to subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button and click the notification bell and you'll find out about all my new videos and generally I put a video out every week or every two weeks on a Saturday. If you found this lesson useful, please like and share it and leave a comment. Let me know how you get on. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions. I always answer those comments below the video. This is Greg from Greg Space Shed. I'll see you very soon in the next video.